Alright hey everyone, welcome to another video by The Frontline Trooper. My name is Andrew Cook. Now this is a quick FAQ on all the questions I've been asked over the last couple of weeks and I've received at least 20 of each. So I thought it'd be a good idea to actually put a video out telling you all this, all my new subscribers and some of my old ones who may not have known these. Um, just to let you guys understand a bit more about what happens to all this outside of the videos and questions that you wanted to know. It's much easier me doing a video than me replying 20 times a week to 20 different people. So I'm going to cut through this quite fast because I don't, there's quite a few questions and I'm not sure how long it's going to take to actually get it all done. But the first question is, what is the material I use? Now, many of you do know that I use a material called styrofoam. Now this is called EPS styrofoam, that's extruded polystyrene. It's a solid block, not, it's not like polystyrene which is made of tiny little balls, this is a compressed, more dense, uh, fiber created one. Um, you can find this in several places. Many in America have found it in a place called Lowe's. Now I'm not American so I'm not familiar with that place but I believe it's a big hardware store. Um, some states have it in Lowe's. Um, in New Zealand you can find it in insulation hardware stores. That kind of um, goes for the same as American. Same with Australia. Um, Italy and France they've found it in also hardware stores but they've got different um, specified hardware stores that sell these kind of stuff. So you just really need to ask around. It's called EPS styrofoam, um, extruded polystyrene. It's a product of Do, Dow, sorry, D, capital D O W. Now you just got to ask around the managers or the just staff or the employees working there. Ask them if they've ever heard of it and if they can lead you on to another reliable source. Now I'm just going to jump into the big question: Do I sell my weapons? No, I do not. The reason for that is because I do not own the idea of Halo. Sure, I make these weapons and I've made them my own, but I do not own the property and the license to sell these and get money for them. So you guys, um, that is a big letdown for you, but you are going to have to put away your wallets because I just can't sell them. If I did try to sell them, um, people would start knowing that you can come buy them from here and I would probably get picked up and noticed by someone working for Microsoft or something. And even though I'm doing a pretty cool thing, they're not really going to care much, they're just going to want the money and I will probably get sued and I'll have to take that on my YouTube channel. So that's pretty much the hard deadline facts. I cannot sell these because I will get in trouble and you guys won't have anyone to watch anymore or won't have any Halo guys to watch anymore. So yeah, these weapons aren't for sale. I'm here on YouTube to teach you guys how to make these, not to give them to you. Um, otherwise that completely defines the purpose of why I'm here. Now do I give away weapons? Um, I have not actually given away any weapons. Um, Mainly because of the fact that in New Zealand now, as well as shipping internationally, you're not really allowed to ship guns. Um, anything that looks like a gun from a, what do you call it, something like that, just a two dollar gun you could find that thing, putting that through an x-ray on a parcel or anything when it goes through all the blipping, it picks up as a gun. Not instantly going to tell it's a plastic gun, but it will appear as a gun. They'll take it off the slide, check it out. Um, and they will probably uh, destroy it or send it back to you or you'll get fined. Now the only way you can actually sell guns and how people do it on eBay and all that kind of stuff is actually the guns belong to BB gun companies or um, film replica companies or live round companies and stuff so they always have like these tags on the parcels which go straight through the post. If I had, because oh, I'm not a company, I can't claim rights over these, they'll just get turned away. So I can't give them to you or sell them. Now why don't I have a constant upload here on YouTube? Um, unlike people like Freddie W who will always upload every Saturday or Friday, whatever it is, um, they're all partners. I'm not a partner here. Um, I do, uh, their life is YouTube. Um, people like Freddie W work full time for their videos so they don't do anything outside. Well, they may do some part time work or something like that, but I'm a full time design student at university, college, um, so I can't really, I don't know how long I'm going to take to make a video or whatnot, but I do get them out quite frequently, a minimum of two a week if possible, so actually I'm doing better than the majority of um, partners, so you're just going to have to put up with what you get when you get it. Now what do I do with my older guns once I made a new one? So once I, pretty much as you know, I would have started off with these crappy as guns, um, ages ago, now you're probably not even saying that's crappy and you'd want it, too bad. Um, I can't give them away as I said and I can't sell them so pretty much I just give them to other or lend them to other YouTubers around the country, uh, country here um, to use in their films or whatnot because I don't want to give them my awesome ones but I don't really mind them having those because as I said they're quite shitty compared to my brand new ones which have cocking devices and whatnot. 
So yeah, um, that's what happens to them. They don't just sit in a wall, they actually get used by other people. Now, how did I make my live action The Final Beacon? Now, if many of you, many of you should have seen it, it's the one where I was out and all these lens flares, which you guys kind of got sick of, but I love them. It kind of gave like an alien feel, a bit different to many movies you see these days, and just to kind of give it a bit more of an effects glance. So, um, how did I make that? I had an idea, I wrote up a storyboard, wrote up a script, had to manage locations, film crews, like when we can get it out, how many cameras I could get for that day. Um, there's a whole bunch of organizing, like many of you don't do these films or have tried, truly understand how hard it is actually to get these films together. Once you got locations, you had to deal with birds, and they were a nuisance in the, the forest. I didn't think of that. So you had to find scenes where you could film between the birds and it kind of split up your dialogue. But pretty much, how did I make it? Um, dedication, good management, good team, um, getting everything there on time, making all the suits, as you would have seen I, over the course of these months. I build the guns purposely so I can use them in the films. And um, just a good imagination for what you want to do and just a dedication to do it. And then I took it back into After Effects and put it all together. Um, that did take a bit of time. How did I do some of the effects? Um, some of the action muzzle flashes were thanks to Andrew Kramer's Action Essentials for After Effects. Um, and just me and my knowledge for special effects and stuff. Now another question is, can I be in a collab with you? Um, I would love to, but the fact is I actually live in New Zealand, not America. Now, if you don't know where New Zealand is, it's the place that's currently holding the Rugby World Cup, which is going on pretty damn cool. Um, so yeah, uh, I really don't live in the same country as you, and I'm not going to fly all the way over to America just to be in a collab with you. Maybe if someone like Freddie W asked me, then yeah, I probably would. But I can't for you guys because I'm too busy and it would cost me about a thousand bucks. Now what paints do I use? This is a very common question. Um, People believe that you can use styrofoam, I mean, spray paint on styrofoam. It's a bad idea. Um, styrofoam is a very acidic based, sorry, not styrofoam, spray paint is a very acidic based uh, uh, kind of aerosol and it will melt away the foam. You can just uh, search up spray paint on styrofoam, you'll see some pretty bad um, turnouts. It just completely erodes away the surface and becomes this burnt looking thing. So I use just simple acrylics. Um, acrylics for many of you that aren't design people, um, they're just the standard paints you'll find for poster paints or uh, wall coverages. It's uh, just like water-based paints that are cheap. They've got a good thick coat. If you really do want to use um, spray paint, which I do recommend later, it gives a really nice metallic surface that you can't get in paints unless you mix it with silvers. Um, I'd suggest using a quite a heavy, thick-based paint, which I use as a exterior paint for um, concrete. That's still like an acrylic base. It's just quite thick and it gives you that nice level of protection. So if you wanted to get a nice shine with spray paint, do multiple coats, maybe about five of that, and you should be fine. It will protect the surface of the styrofoam from getting bled into by the aerosol. Another question about my movies. Will I ever put Covenant in it? I would love to. The fact is, I'm not a good animator yet and I haven't found anyone who is good at animating elites or able to model their own elites and there are many other substitutes for putting elites in my film such as taking them from Halo Reach um, or making my own suit. The reason I don't want to do both of those is because it would look cheesy. I'll have a cool ass film and then suddenly, oh, that looks like a really fake shitty elite. It just ruined your whole film. Um, so I've got to find some common ground between that two. In my previous one I had to blur them out. Um, I failed really badly on the um, displacement map so I couldn't do an elite kind of in this, so I just decided to do a blur. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I can't get Covenant Elites because they're too hard to animate, too hard to model, and I don't want to put one in that's going to make the rest of the film just look completely gay as soon as that scene arrives. Now, many I've done all of these guns, Halo, Mass Effect, and the one that's kept on coming up in my messages is, will I ever make a Spartan laser? Yes, I will make a Spartan laser. Uh, one of my mates called Lorenzo, he's an Italian mate, uh, he's been making a Spartan laser over the last couple of weeks. Here's some of his pictures now. As you can see, he used uh, styrofoam. He used a white one, uh, which is perfectly fine. It depends where you live, it changes. But he went through the whole process. I've been posting the pics up on my Facebook page, so those of you who are on my Defrontline Trooper Facebook page, which you can get access through the link at the end, you'll see that 
you would have been up to date and seen that he's been doing this and it's pretty amazing. We're both going to be going for a cool look like this where we don't use the green uh, Spartan paint as default because we don't really like it. We're uh, wanting to make our own custom paints giving it a grey look. So his one turned out pretty damn nice for a very first attempt. So honestly, his work is amazing and who knows, I might be having him on my site here on YouTube quite often because his guns are pretty damn amazing and he's cool. Yeah, my tongue's getting really sore now. Um, the, one of the biggest questions that I have had over the years, everyone's trying to do Pepecura for to make ODST helmets and all that, but once they've actually done the ODST helmets, they don't know how to make a visor. Now, of course, I get asked, how do I make the visors? Originally, for this one, which was my very first ODST helmet, um, I used just simple, uh, it used to be like a clear file folder, it was a blue, and I kind of bent it into position multiple times. I went through at least six bucks worth of these folders to finally get this final result. Now that's only been held by tape, but of course on camera you don't really notice that. So it still gives it that really nice effect. Um, but in real life it's not that great, but I quite like it, so it's a cool helmet. The second one, which I wanted to actually see through because that wasn't a very clear plastic and I couldn't see through it, I actually went uh, to my design college and got help from the industrial design people and how to do this and I got some plastic and I used some of the instruments there um, to kind of heat bend the plastic at certain ridges to give it that nice effect and pretty much yeah I had to cut it into pieces and then just bend it. Um, I've still got to hot glue it together so far oh, right at the moment it just holds there and sits there. Um, it was hot glued for the film, it just kind of broke off, but yeah, that's pretty much simple technique. Um, there's many ways you can actually get a good look for this. Um, many people have used motorcycle helmets, but for people who are like you guys, quite young, um, I don't recommend doing that. It costs quite a bit to get the motorcycle helmet, and if you stuff up, then well, there goes a good 30 bucks or whatever for, that it costs for the helmet. So I recommend just playing around with some plastic stuff. You can pick them up from stationary warehouses or anything like that, and just kind of mold them into your helmet. And after a couple of attempts, you'll finally get the idea of how it's supposed to work. So that's all the common questions that I've had over the last three weeks, and I've been replying to, but I decided just to do a film. Um, be on the lookout for several tutorials that will teach you how to make this assault rifle from stage one. That's a full-on tutorial, unlike my other ones where I've just filmed the process of me cutting out. This one's an actual description on what paints I'm using, what I'm doing to it, and how I got out in the final results and all that kind of stuff. My name's Andrew Cook. This is the Frontline Trooper. Thank you.